This is Josiah Plays Sunless Sea. Alright, we're here in London. We need to buy some supplies and so forth, but first we are going to speak to Mr. Sax and see exactly what he wants us to do. Midnight. A presence dominates your lodgings. Its fur-trimmed robe is the red of blood on snow. Over your chair hangs a familiar brown sack, bulging with offerings. Londoners give generously to the crimson beast of winter. Anything to be rid of it. The figure stares into the fireplace, smelling of soft musk and harsh ammonia. I require a sturdy vessel and a captain. Yours comes recommended. You will suffice. All right, Mr. Sachs, take my service. An ancient contract, words not to be spoken lightly. It says, you may wish to wait until you have explored the main trading ports around London before doing this. I believe I have achieved that. So let's, uh, let's do this. A deal is struck. The beast withdraws its hand from the fireplace, examining it. Packed laker, neath snow. It disappears back into the incarnadine robe. Three deliveries by your release. Do not tarry. You have much to lose. You are in the service of Mr. Sax. Mr. Sax has boarded your ship. Take too much time and he may take you. The crimson beast of winter lurks in your hold. Mr. Sax is like evil Santa Claus, basically. Alright. Well, where do we need to go? The Crimson Beast of Winter lurks in your hold. This is not a healthy situation for you, your ship, or your crew. I can uh, end my service, though not amicably. But let's do the first delivery. The creature calls for you. It is time to begin. A hunger that can never be satisfied. That can never be satiated, sorry. Mr. Sachs is waiting, clutching what looks like a leg of lamb. The meat is rotten. The bone is well chewed. A fool sought a name that devours. It devoured him. A lifetime's wealth wasted on cravings that can never be satiated. When all was eaten, he stripped the meat from his fingers in search of solace. Still the hunger gnawed and screamed in his belly. He thought this pitiful offering of poison might free him. Debts are not so easily paid. So I have to deliver this to Khan's Heart or Pigmoat Isle. Well, I don't know where Khan's Heart is, but I do know where Pigmoat Isle is. Take too much time and he may take you. Alright, so I'm going to Pigmoat Isle. Let's take a look at the map for a second. Pigmoat Isle is here, I think. Right? Yeah, it's here. So maybe we will stop off at Mutton Island and Demo Island to get port reports on our way there. Um, and we'll see what happens. Pig Mode Isle. Go, go, go. So how much how much f f supplies and stuff do I need here? Um, in my hold, I have twenty out of forty capacity, but I have I have plenty of fuel, I think, but not plenty of food. So let's I'll buy a couple more fuel. And I'll buy some supplies. And I'll leave myself nine hold capacity, which will expand as I start to eat this stuff. Can I sell that parabola linen here? How much does that sell for? Sell Syntelac for seventy. I can sell parabola linen for 60. 
feel like I could probably sell it for more somewhere else. Okay. Alright. Let's, um... You know, go. Maybe I'll keep the light off for a while. As we slowly sail down to the next place. Mutton Island. Hull is maxed out, but I'm going to try to avoid any kind of combat. Fighting the low-level monsters that I can actually kill isn't really worth it. You hardly get anything for it. And fighting anything harder than that, I can't do or else I will just die. Well, fuck it. Let's kill this fucking thing. Defeated. We took two damage. If I put you up for supplies, it will get rid of our current hunger. Sector for knowledge, I get like one fragment, which isn't really worth it. I'll get rid of our current hunger. Lost my hunger. I would have burned more fuel trying to avoid it than would it be worth it. Uh, okay, Mutton Island. In the service of Mr. Sex. This is not... Annual save. Twenty echoes for some drinks. I can explore the shore. I can get a mascot. I can chat to the fisherman. Oh, this is how I get my port report. So do I want to explore the shore or visit the hilltop above town? I think I'll visit the hilltop above town. There's not much wind on the Untersee, but Mutton Island suffers eerie gusts and buffet buffets from an inexplicably local fragment of weather. And the air on the hilltop sometimes carries interesting sense. No, I did that last time, and all it revealed was the wind coming up through the whatever, and it wasn't really worth it. Let's explore the shore. A glittering eye. You turn, and there's a long, lank, brown man at your shoulder. Listen, he says. I have a story for you. I... Something about the graybeard compels your attention. Leave and don't look back. No, I have stories for you. I kind of want to see what happens when I do this, so I'm going to. Fresh from the sea, he has experienced horror and wonder, but so have you, and your tale is so much the fresher. You wrestle with each other's histories until at last he concedes. Here, he says, this is where it all began, with the astronomer and the ephemerides, he whispers in your ear. Gained 50 fragments, lost two terror. Lost a Z story and a tale of terror. That doesn't really seem that worth it. Let's see what happens if I do the other thing. I am a save scummer in this game and many other games, uh, and I don't really feel bad about it. Oh yeah, I know about my first delivery. Let's, um... Port report. Explore the shore. Let's do this then. Something about the gray beard compels your attention. Keen five terror. A rambling tale. His story has a wedding full of murders, and a leafless forest, and a vast serpent which eats souls. The tale winds on and on, like the serpent, until you are lost in the dizzy toils of its sinister ships and its glamorous corpses. You nod awake. He's gone. But not, it seems, before searching your pockets for small change. It took two echoes, and I gained five terror, but I gained a tale of terror, which I think is worth 
more, so I'm okay with that. Alright, we're ready to leave here. And head over to Demo Island, which is straight across. I don't want to fight that Aurora Megalops. I really don't. I don't see much of an upside to it. Could be worth fighting that pirate ship, though. That weak pirate ship. But maybe I won't do that either. I'll just move on. I don't think the Z-Bat's going to find anything in these explored waters, but... Pigmode Isle. But I've been to Pigmode Isle. Hmm, weird. There's my something awaits you, just in time for me to hit port. A fervid forest of fungus. First thing we do here <coughs> is save. Alright, the affable factor. Port report. So last time we were here, we did tea with the factor. So this time we'll explore Demo Island. Could also try gathering supplies. Let's explore the island. Close crowded thickets of Bolagus and Skirily. The Iron and Misery Company fells them daily, but they grow back almost as fast. The interior of the island is dark and wild. Privateer encampment. This was an empty cliff top above the bleak waves. Now it blazes with color. Striped tents. Colored flames. The music of pianola and kettle drum. Mustachioed women and languorous men play chess, carve bones, eat cats, and polish their terrifying brass weapons. These are the Iron Republic privateers. Pirates whose practices contravene the very laws of nature. So they sound pretty serious. Attacking them seems like a bad idea. So does the other thing, though. They are numerous, but lost to wine and music. You'll have the element of surprise, but it's very hard to know exactly what those weapons will do. Or creep close and eavesdrop. The Republic is privy to the gossip of hell. Creep close and you may learn impossible secrets. <sighs> well, this gives me a 46% chance, and this gives me a 50% chance, so let's just try attacking, and obviously I'm going to save scum this, because that's who I am. I succeeded. A disorienting battle. Your first volley does satisfyingly grievous damage, but a half dozen privateers snatch up weapons. One is a sort of Gatling gun. One appears to fire bubbles composed of rainbow meat. What? A third makes it rain in your heart. The fourth weapon explodes in a shower of fat purple sparks that chirp like canaries and chew their way through everything in the encampment. Privateers, tents, loot. The battle is over before it's begun, but by the time it's safe to approach, the sparks have devoured many of the privateers' treasures. Gained one tear, gained two fragments, and gained 99 echoes, which makes it worthwhile to me. All right. Should I try to gather supplies? Save on my second slot. Let's see what happens. Matter of luck, I could go either way. I was lucky! Some of the island's fungus is good to eat. Some is poisonous, hallucinogenic, or mischievous. Good luck! I'm getting more terror, but I my terror is still low, and I'm not worried about it right now. And I got a free supply. Let's get out of here. So now we go to Pigmoat Isle. Lick a monkey crag. Great name. Lick a monkey crag.
finally discovered Pigmode Isle, even though I've actually been here. Pigmode Isle looks cool. And I can do some more stuff with the rats and the guinea pigs while I'm here. Which is exciting. Do not hit the side of the island. Save. Two houses, both alike in dignity. Wait! I fucked up. Well, it's okay. Let's do the delivery. The first delivery. The creature calls for you. It is time to begin. Yeah, I've been given my first delivery. I'm here. Hmm. Here it is. A delivery for Mr. Sachs. This is far enough from London. It will suffice. Get a port report while I'm here. A hunger that can never be satiated. Pigmote's store of food diminishes quickly. Hungry rats and cavies stare at each other, a new glint passing from eye to eye as the cravings and stomach pangs spread. They stop to watch you in silence as you go past, mouths salivating. In the middle of the small town, a few of the hungriest begin digging a well. I gained three centilac, which is nice. That's... that's money. It's money in my pocket. Completed my first delivery. Alright, what I want to do now... I don't have something awaits you. See, so I can't do this. Maybe I can visit the Cavi Ghetto. I could attempt to broker a union. I thought about doing this last time. But first I want to... I want to sit here and get my uh, something away to you real quick. So, I think we have a 60 second wait here in the harbor. What I like to call pulling a Stoddard's Haven. <laughs> that is the place where I like to sit in the harbor and for multiple times. I wonder what the second delivery is. I wonder what the second delivery is. As we sit here and eat food. Come on, there we go. Alright, we're gonna save again. On number 10. The second delivery. The creature calls for you once again. A prize that became a curse. Mr. Sachs produces a jeweled bird. The thief thought it would bring her riches. Perhaps it would. But when the gracious widow and the cheery man both covet what you stole, mere money ceases to be of concern. To offend one or make an enemy of the other. She sought a third way. A moment of inspiration that came too late. We want no part in this feud. Settle it. Take this to the smugglers of the Isle of Cats to favor the widow. Or the cheery man's agent on Mutton Island. Okay, so we're going to go to Mutton Island. But, let's do some stuff here first. Let's help Marinia resolve a dilemma. An aid runs over. Hairless advisor, you return to us. Praise the tide. We need your wisdom once again. So, yeah. The eyes of the Z turn to Pigmode Isle. A dilemma. How will you advise Pigmode Isle? The aide squeals. Wonderful news, hairless advisor. Our Cintillac harvest has been bountiful. 
Our harvesters can temporarily be put to use elsewhere. What should we have them work on? Uh, they can enjoy this moment. They can build defenses. I have three might. I have six spirit. Or every rodent deserves a home to be proud of. I have four civilization. Let's uh, have them construct housing this time. From holes to houses, the harvesters rub their paws with satisfaction. With every new residence, Murinia grows. Soon it will be a city. I've gained 50 fragments. I've gained one pigmodile civilization, new total five. And I've resolved the dilemma for better or worse. Okay, and then while we're here, maybe we will... Try to broker this union, but I'm gonna I'm gonna save scum this. Number one. Sixty percent. Mirini will be stronger if its two houses work together. I succeeded. Yay. Hail Murinia! Chief Engineer Edgar is a pragmatic rat. He listens to your proposition and agrees to discuss the future. The Seneschal, no less proud for the mud in her fur, holds firm on her people's needs, but is ready to compromise on a few of their wants. In particular, We renounce all our claims to... She almost chokes on the words, The Rat Star. The chief engineer sits back, his whiskers t twitch happily. The Rat Star, you say? In that case, let us talk terms. So they have agreed to call it the Rat Star instead of whatever they were calling it. They gained three spirits, so total is nine. That's awesome. Succeeded, succeeded. Forged peace between the rats and cavies. You cast your lot in with the rats. Okay, so the, the uh, place has lots of spirit now. They've got spirit. Yes, they do. They've got spirit. How about you? Repair is very expensive. Alright, I'm not going to steal the Rat Star. So we're done here. We're going back to Mutton Island. Maybe I should stop at the Kuman Canal and get a uh, port report. It's not exactly on the way. It makes the journey pew, pew, instead of... Pew. No, I'm a little concerned about the time thing. You know, that I've got them with me and they're like, they're like, hurry up or bad things will happen. So I kind of want to just like do this as fast as possible. So I'm not going to go over there to the command canal. Not right now. I don't really need my light on at the moment. How's my terror? It's only 19. How can you be terrified when you're going past a place called Lick a Monkey Crag? How, I ask. How? Moving right along. Got my something awaits you. Almost a mutton island. Yay. Yay. Quaker's Haven. All right. Let's, um, delivery, explore the shore, a midnight ceremony, a warm night on Mutton Island, a balmy wind blows from the east, rich with promise, <clears throat> there are torches bobbing up the hill, whatever's happening, it's for locals only, but you could follow them with a 46% chance, I gotta try this. Succeeded, yay. 
You don't know the cliff paths like the locals do. And you have to climb more than you walk. Your skin is sheened with sweat by the time you reach the top. They've started without you. How rude. An elderly fellow wears a feathered headdress and not much else. He seems to be leading the ceremony. One assistant holds an ear of corn. Where did he find that down here? Another a stone jug. Another a clay tablet. The elderly priest addresses them all to his congregation. You catch snatches of it. The drowned man is not a god, the villagers hiss a reply. He came from the north, and the north to the north he will return, another reply. The north is too cold for gods. Too cold for gods, they intone delightedly. Finally, they nod in agreement. The circle turns as one to grab one of their number, a man, or woman, with a lamp. They carry him, or possibly her, to the precipice and hurl the flailing body over the edge, down into the oily black waves far below. They just did a human sacrifice. Their business done, the locals remove their robes and wander amiably back to town. They all seem quite jolly. Apparently the night's business went well. They retreat to the cock and magpie for a pint. Got a tale of terror and 40 fragments, gained 3 terror. Okay, well, that was certainly interesting. That was certainly interesting. Let's do the delivery here. Cheery Man's fellow is drinking in the pub. No good deed. Oh, little lost birdie. Well, there's a thing. You have my patron's thanks, and here's your reward. What was promised, and is well deserved. Only thing is, there's only two folks what might have his cheeriness's property. And that's the one what stole it, and the one what brought it and figured they could sell it back like indeed you are doing right here. So, and it's nothing personal, mind, I'm afraid I must break something. Little warning to any others out there who might be thinking of being clever. Tell you what, how's about we make it fair? Use the coin. Heads or legsies? He flips it, high, almost to the rafters. Rather than waiting for it to fall, you punch him hard in the face. The pub's clientele grumbles, but are soon mollified by free drinks all around. Paid for with the money in the chap's pocket, of course, leaving a little for yourself. Second delivery completed, and we gained 78 echoes. That's nice, and we did not get anything broken, which is really kind of the good thing. What's the third delivery? A life that was never lived. Mr. Sachs is staring at a small wooden box as you enter the hold. Inside, wrapped in a few pitiful scraps of velvet, is a lock of blonde hair and a set of teeth, carefully polished, barely used. The winter was harsh. The fire went cold. Later, the mother wished to forget. A convenient tra tragedy. Deliver this to Abbott Horizon in the north. All right. I think I know exactly where that is. Avid Horizon is here. Okay, so... Do we have sufficient supplies to get there and get back to London? 9 and 10? Maybe. And we can stop at... Station 3... Actually, there's nothing at Station 3 that's worth doing. Maybe we stop at London real fast. On our way up there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop at London. So I'm gonna stop at the light ship to turn in my uh, recent news. Then go over to London, resupply or whatever. And then, and get rid of some terror, and then go up to the Abbot Horizon. I think we're making pretty good time with these deliveries. We're not fucking around too much. No auroral megalops. Ooh, if I could get rid of a- oh, damn, they just ate! <laughs> Fuck! I was about to say I could get rid of a lot of hunger with this fucking thing if... Ah, oh, it hit me. Very rude. I missed. Oh, it's kicking my ass. Come on. Oh, 
I missed again. Oh, come on! This thing is wrecking the shit out of my hull, this weak-ass little monster. It seriously is destroying me. I, look at how much damage I'm taking. This is dumb. And I can't, I can't shoot it, because it's all up in my shit. It's not in my firing arc, like, ever. What the fuck is this right now? Knock, knock. A crewman steps into your cabin. His uniform is one of your issue, though the face rings no bells. They do blend together after a while. This, however, does not look like a chap who swabs decks or loads cannons. Begging your pardon, Captain! Permit me to introduce myself. Jervis, at your service. At least while the poor fellow tied up behind the galley remains regrettably indisposed. Am I to trouble you for a brief moment of your time before my escort to the brig? Yeah, I'll hear him out. A message from London. My gracious employer has grave concerns about your guests down in the hold, Captain. And the course to which you're now committed. Blood will spill before this voyage is over, but it needn't be yours. Jervis produces a small vial. Crystal. The blood is red. Redder than normal blood. Almost glowing with vitality. Here is a more bitter vintage. When the time comes, I urge you to choose wisely. A favor from on high is rarely a poor investment. I have a vial of highly questionable blood. Red, as blood tends to be. But redder. Deeper. Alive. And given your third delivery. Interesting. Alright, well we can get rid of some hunger, I guess. But we lost an unacceptable amount of hull there. To a weak-ass creature like that. Oh, that was terrible. Just terrible. Absolutely terrible. Light ship. I don't need my light right now. I'm gonna lose some terror when I get... Alright. Speak to the crew. They long for news of home. I lost five terror and got a Z story. Awesome. Thanks, guys. It's fine. Let's get in a battle. Since I've already lost a bunch of hull, let's lose a bunch more! That makes sense. Keep him in my firing arc. If I can stay on him from behind like this, I might be able to kill him without losing any. Alright. Destroyed a pirate steam pinnace. The ship is yours. What will you do with her? Loot and scuttler. I got a cache of curiosities. Let's see what I got. A bolt of spider silk. You can find spider silk in London, of course. There are troubles there with sorrow spider infestation, like anywhere in the Neath. But for the real quality, you need to go east, to the Conate, or to the fang-bristling fastness of Savior's Rocks. Alright, I'm definitely not gonna fight that other Mega Lops, there's no fucking upside to that. Other than losing a bunch of hull. We'll go to London real quick. I'll turn my light off. Where is everyone? Where did they go? They're here. They're here. You're not alone. So I don't know who gave me this other, uh... This other thing to deliver, and which I should do. I'm thinking there's no reason to make an enemy of Mr. Sachs at this point. I don't know who this other person is that... They were a little too mysterious for their own good, I think. All right, now that I'm back, an inspection. Uh, I have nothing to hide. Okay, good, I don't have anything to hide. Messages from the harbor master. 
Free Evening, Roser's Wharf. Watchful Curios and Long Boxes. All right. Let's go to the Admiral. Let's do Port Reports. The Moe's Island, one fuel, 20 echoes. Pigmoat Isle, one fuel, 10 echoes. Quaker's Haven, one and five. Um, anybody here that I care about? A Haunted Doctor? No, I'm good. Um, what do I have to sell? Fuel and supplies, obviously, not selling. I could sell some Cintillac here for 70. Or I could carry it around in case I want to do something else with it. I could sell some soul. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to sell the souls here. Sell the bolts of spider silk or sell the parabola linen. Like, I'm not really sure where I should sell those things, but I'm kind of carting them around in my hold. You know what I'm saying? The linen and the silk and the scintillac. Maybe I should just sell all that stuff. I think I will. But not the creative souls. Not the creative souls. Well, I guess I might as well sell it. You can only, you can buy one for 63. So if I need one for some reason, I can get one and all I will have lost is three echoes. That's actually an amazing sell buy ratio here. Okay. Let's, um, let's see, anything else I need to do here, anything else I need to do, what's in my hold now, alright, just this and stamp crate for the special quest thing, and my fuel and supplies, let's go to my lodgings, let's read the morning papers, spend time with the family, just enjoy their company. Lose the rest of my terror. Okay, good. Now we will purchase for ourselves some more fuel and supplies and we'll make a run to the north to deliver this thing. Full capacity 19. Alright. Let's see. Fuel. That should be good. 15 of each should be plenty for now. All right. All right. Let's go. So let's plan my route here. I need to get to Avid Horizon. What am I going to stop at on the way? Hunter's Keep, there's no point in stopping there. I could go Shepherd Isles, Abbey Rock, Chapel of Lights. Or I could try to get those on the way back. Let's just go to Vendor Bite. Wither Codex, Avid, Avid Horizon. Tomb Colonies.
Going to vendor bite. All right, we made it here. Save real quick. All right. Um, I don't have a strange catch. I don't think I want to sample the special. Explore vendor bite. Get some port report. See what happens here. A raggedy fellow. Captain, I'm a good seaman. I'm yours if you'll have me. Will you have me? I'm hungry. I'll wear card. He seems likely enough, if a little ragged and sorrowful. I could take him with me, but unfortunately my crew is full. I could leave him here, but unfortunately... My crew is... I don't know why I can't do this. Crew no more than nine. I can't leave him here because my crew is full. That doesn't make any sense. No room. Full complement, no space. Or I could be very generous and give... 250 echoes? No, I'm not that generous. Nope, sorry, bud. A shrug. A. He knew it before I asked, but I hope yet. Well then, Captain. Take my blazing. You'll remember me another time, eh? When you have a birth spare for a good sailor what knows his way? He's laying it on a bit thick with all the Z's, but perhaps next time you'll assure him, perhaps. Lost one terror. Alright, well, more exciting things could have happened than that, but nothing terrible happened. That's always good. Some memories of distant shores here for 12. Alright. We're done here. We're going to go to Wither and Codex, then to the Avid Horizon, make the third delivery. Watch out for lifebergs. Normally there's one like right around here. Surprised not to see it this time. Go through sensor's arch. We've got something awaits you. We'll pull into Andergard Harbor here. Get a port report, see if there's any little exploration things we can do. Manual save. Alright, we made it to Wither, the house of the question. Gain Salt's attention, what does that take? A secret, a Z story, 10 echoes. Hmm. Let's go with the drowned man, a hundred echoes. I don't really want to do that. Um Explore the town, gather intelligence, that's where I might get my port report. Surely even wither. 50 echoes, that's a lot. We'll explore the town. Walk by the shore. The Black Sea whispers on the beach. Another soft sound is audible above the waves. A castaway. Oh! This was a bad thing the last time. Avoid. Avoid. 
Sad sighs pass. She waved languidly as he moved down the beach. A ghost? An eccentric bather? You'll never know. Gained a memory of distant shores, though. So, what does this mean? It means it costs you six Z-stories for one unit of fuel? I don't understand. And what does this six times zero mean? I kind of want to find out, but I kind of don't want to fuck around. Tales of Terror for supplies, but I just don't understand wh what that means. Exactly. Let's not worry about it. We're done here. Super stealthy. You're not going to see me, Lifeberg. You're not going to see me. Because I'm super stealthy. And I'm going to Codex. Super stealthy. Now this time, before I make port, I'm going to stop and get something to wait to you. So that I don't have to reset it and wait the whole damn time. This time I'm going to be smart about it. Because now, it should only be a few seconds, rather than waiting the whole time. Codex is cool looking. Come on. Something awaits. Await me, damn it! I want to be awaited. There we go. Alright, Codex, Isle of Answers. He's about to be an idle Isle of Save game. Okay, while I'm here, I do have a Searing Enigma. I could acquire a Doomed Monster Hunter, but uh, I don't know that I want to do that right now. I do want to compile a port report. And, oh, that's all I can do here. Something awaits me doesn't do me any good here, unless I have a Lamentable Relic. What does Acquire a Doomed Monster Hunter entail? I just saved the game, so let's let's click on it and see. This one has waited all her life for a single answer. Give her that answer and she will be ready to lay down her life. A cracked voice. Thank you, thank you, this is what I needed. This is enough, she coughs rackingly. I've waited so long to speak and now, now I have nothing at all to say. Quickly then, find me my death. Doomed Monster Hunter. The Monster Hunter winnows the lesser terrors from the true. She has slain that which makes light in the deeps, eaten its flesh in remembrance of certain feasts of the Z, and fashioned her weapon from its remains. She was human once. But this Monster Hunter is ready for a glorious ending. Icarus in black awaits. So, is she an officer? No. What is she, then? Just... Where's my doomed monster hunter? Here, under cargo. And she doesn't... she's taking up hold space. Well, I don't know that I want a doomed monster hunter right now. When and if I decide I need a doomed monster hunter, I know where to come to get one. Codex, port report, we're done here. Okay, we're going to now go to the Avid Horizon and make this last delivery. I think we've made good time. I don't think he's going to be mad about how long it's taking. Explored waters, not so much sense of sending the bat out here, but whatever. 
The Avid H O R Eisen. The Avid Ho Ryzen. And something awaits me. This place is cool. It's very epic seeming. Service at Avid Horizon. Manual save. As soon as you dock, Mr. Sachs lumbers ashore. It has been preparing for this. Plunging a hand into its cloak, it removes a handful of ammonia-scented snow. It places it on the ground and adds another on the top. Into this one, it presses the teeth and the hair from the small box. Potential. Substance. Only one thing needs to be added, as in the tales of the Gnomon. The Crimson Beast of Winter waits impatiently for you to provide it. Okay, so I can either give my blood, or I can substitute the blood, which is what the mysterious other person wanted me to do. Highly questionable blood. Well, I just saved, so... Let's see what happens both ways. The essence of life. You nick your hand with a blade and hold it above the frozen mound. A drop wells up and falls. More follow. They fizz in the lacquer, which softens and melts into a puddle of snow. A puddle from which a hand emerges. Then a head. Then another hand, stretching as it clambers up from nowhere. The shape of a child, its skin glistening. White snow rippled with red. You reach out a hand. The child grips it with the chill of frostbite. Its legs finally form from the last of the lacquer, and it falls to its new knees, shivering and looking around in confusion. One of your sailors hurries over with a warm blanket. Another smacks his idiot head. Mr. Sachs stares down at the creature, which shivers and hugs itself. Inadequate, Sachs says. Again. Striding to the sealed gate, it rests a gloved hand against it, basking in the chill. The whisper of a place too cold for gods. Refreshing. Dispose of the mongrel as you see fit. Your service is done. Be gone before I change my mind. Something new will surely appear in your lodgings. He's departed. Approach the snow child. It cowers from the crimson beast, its snow still settling. Hmm. The snow child looks pretty snowy. It looks up at you, frightened and shivering for reasons that have nothing to do with cold. Your blood streaks through its face. Are, are you taking me home now? Ask the snow child about home. It remembers a life on the streets of London. A distant memory. London? London! Yes, I wanted to play on the rooftops, but it made Mother cry. She cries a lot, but she says it's not my fault. She'll be worried. Wait, you're not a devil, are you? Mother says to look out for devils. It gives you a suspicious sniff. No, no eggy smell. You can take me back, right? I've always wanted to go sailing. The snow child looks up at you. It won't take up much room. It could do with a name, though, at least until remembers if it used to have one. Child of Snow was born at the Avid Horizon. Oh, I get to name the Snow Child. Uh, Winter, Shion, Loki, Boreas, Snegorochka, Elliot, or Rose. I'm gonna name the little the little tyke Loki. Maybe he'll be a mischievous sort. Loki smirks. Then that is my name. You reach out to take its cold hand in yours, leaving the crimson beast behind. Snow Child has joined the ship. You've brought the Snow Child aboard. Every day it melts a little more. You've named the Snow Child. Um. Okay. 
It's not in my cargo, it's just a curiosity. Interesting. Um, so that's one thing that could happen, right? Let's just take a quick look at the other option. Which we will do in our next episode. Dun dun dun, cliffhanger. So, thanks for watching. It's going to do it for this one. This has been Josiah Plays Sunless Sea.